Welcome to another episode of Mondays with Mark, and it's July 2023, and with it being summer, we wanted to focus on our many summer educational programs. We have a vet med youth camp that allows students to come learn about animal health here for the summer. Additionally, when you move into high school, the entire UC Davis has this great summer camp called SMASH, and it's a way that kids that are interested in careers in STEM can spend time here on campus. And then lastly, as we move into undergraduates, pre-vet students that are interested in coming to veterinary school any place in the country with a real focus on supporting diverse students. These students come in and spend five weeks with us, with our faculty, staff, students, with our applications team, so that when they apply to veterinary school in the years ahead, they have a really strong application. So one of the things I love about our summer education programs is the way that our veterinary students can become embedded in the research laboratories with our faculty across the school. So here we are at Tupper, and I want to introduce you to Kalani, who's doing a summer project with Dr. Toda Bush in her laboratory. Let's go visit. Kalani, tell me about your research. So we are looking at DNA of cells in the brain and in the tumors of dogs with skin cancer and hopefully this will shed light on how it spreads to the brain and maybe give us a clue as to how to stop it. So is it melanoma specific? Yeah, um, we're looking at melanoma in dogs but they behave very similarly in humans so anything in the dog can also be applied to humans. Here we are in Dr. Leonard's laboratory at Tupper Hall, and I'm here with Brian, who's a second year DVM student who's doing this Summer Star program, and Erin, who's in her DVM PhD program and just finished her second year in the PhD program. I wonder if you could show me a little bit about your research. Yes, come on over. So I know you guys are working on a way to better diagnose dry eye disease in animals. Tell me about that. Yeah, so um, my STAR project uh, involves developing a phenol red thread uh, test, which is a commonly used diagnostic uh, tool in veterinary ophthalmology. And uh, this test um, has actually been uh, commercially unavailable for some time now. Uh, our objective is to make our own and test its uh, accuracy and reliability as a diagnostic tool. Congratulations on your research. Thank you, thank you. Aaron, tell me a little bit about your research and your PhD and, and how that integrates with the summer program that Brian's doing. Yeah, so I'm studying evaporative dry eye disease, which is one of the forms of dry eye disease that we see in our clinical patients. In order to test this in my mouse model, I need this phenol red thread test right. to determine if these animals do have dry eye disease. So developing this test with Brian is really helpful for me to continue my studies. Congratulations. I know it's very competitive to, to get a spot in these labs, so congrats to you both. two other summer programs I want to make sure everybody's aware of. The first one is around our global program that allows 33 different students go to 20 different countries around the world. Great opportunity for our students to be able to get a global health perspective. Our RX1 Health Institute is a two-week summer institute where we bring physicians, veterinarians, public health officials from all over the world so that they can learn about the interface between public health human health, animal health, ecosystem health, and how they work together. So congrats to everybody involved with those projects. So every summer here in California, one of the things we worry about are the wildfires. And I was really proud last year when the state awarded UC Davis and the One Health Institute a way to help respond to these natural disasters. So let's go meet Dr. Mike Sicardi and learn a little bit more about the new CVET program. Super excited that that you've been able to build this um, program that I know will help the state in many ways. T tell me a little bit more about the last year. Yeah, this last year has been about developing the systems, getting some of the equipment, getting the key personnel in place so that if a disaster happens anywhere in the state of California, the School of Veterinary Medicine can respond. Hey, why don't you show me what we got here? Sure, so this is one of our uh, trailers. Uh, it's provided by the Halter Project, which is one of our donors set up for uh, small animal emergencies. And we have two of our associate directors inside. So this is one of multiple trailers that you have as part of your response unit. So we have a horse trailer, we have this halter trailer for small animals, we have a glide trailer, mm -hmm. and then we have a 44 foot trailer, a large trailer, and it can serve as a mobile incident command post, has sleeping quarters, and a rear section uh, available for animal care. Wow. Sleeping quarters big enough for you? Even big enough for me, yes. Wow. 
So there is a, obviously a process where California Emergency Response Team is telling you, hey, we need your help. You mobilize the team, the equipment, the trailers. So when an incident does occur within a local city, county, those local resources will be called in to serve those animals, whether that's through animal services or a nonprofit group. And the teaching hospital serves as one of those local resources. So if something does happen locally, then they definitely will uh, volunteer and help with those, with those horses as they're coming in. Got it. When they get to the point that their local resources are exhausted, maybe their veterinary clinic is out of service, or they simply just need a refreshing staff, that's when the locals would put in a request to the state to request us to come and assist them. Okay. Got it. That doesn't mean that you're activated. Correct. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. So why don't you show me some of the other infrastructure or equipment and supplies that you have to respond to an emergency? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go check out this mobile tent. <laughs> got it. Tell me what you got here. This is a resource that can be set up in minutes. So it's inflatable, requires zero manpower other than just laid it out, connect it to an inflation source, and boom, up it stands. Uh, we can use it for all different things. So it could be used for personnel and a, a, a break room area or for animals and animal care. And I'd be remiss to not point out, even down behind us here, we have another trailer that is actually the NCAEP, so the Northern California Association of Equine Practitioners, another one of our strong partners, and there's many, many more. And those partnerships are key in the space because we're trying to lead collaborative veterinary medicine during disasters. We do not want to be uh, duplicating or competing in this space. We want to all be working together for the, the best thing for the animals. Perfect. Lastly, I want to congratulate our three recently recognized Chancellor Fellows. So Melanie Garo, Karen Shapiro, and Crystal Rogers just recently was awarded uh, Chancellor Fellow for her work with DEI. And speaking of diversity, I want to make sure you're able to check out a new video that we're just posting about our commencement speakers, the Critter Fixers, and the conversation I had with them about diversity in veterinary medicine. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.